12 years ago, 60 Minutes aired a story about lost boys from Sudan who fought off unspeakable dangers and then flew off to the United States. It all began in the 1980s during Sudan's civil war in which more than 2 million people died. The boys' parents were killed. Their sisters often sold into slavery. Many of the boys died too, but the survivors, thousands of them, started walking across East Africa alone. Five years later, they walked into a refugee camp in Kenya. That's where we first met them, when many were hoping to go to the United States. Well, 3,000 did, as part of the largest resettlement of its kind in American history. We followed the boys for more than a decade and couldn't resist revisiting them. See how they're doing. But first, we'll take you back to northern Kenya, to the Kakuma refugee camp, springtime, 2001. The story will continue in a moment. <laughs> Nothing drew a crowd like the list. Once a week, the lost boys saw their destiny on a bulletin board, the staples of life. On this day, 90 learned they'd be going to America. Boston. Marine, Florida. 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 Every Sunday, a plane arrived at the camp to take the boys from nowhere to somewhere. From Kakuma to JFK and beyond. Not all of the lost boys got to go. Joseph Taban Rafino had walked to the board so many times he tried not to get excited. What's new? Something new. What? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen my name on the board. Your name's on the board, huh? Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, this is Kansas City. Kansas City? Yeah. Do you know where it is? I don't know. Abraham Yonial was taking this walk for the 25th time. He was an ordained minister of Sudan's Episcopal Church at Kakuma. He looked at the board as if it were a holy scroll. I'm going to Chicago. Is it interesting? Oh, it's very interesting. <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> they were called the Lost Boys because they were between 5 and 11 when their Christian villages in southern Sudan were attacked by Islamist forces from the north. When they saw their villages burning, they started running. Streams of boys became rivers. Hundreds became thousands until an exodus of biblical proportions was underway. They walked for three months across Sudan barefoot. 12,000 found refuge in Ethiopia. But after four years, they were chased out at gunpoint, chased to the Gilo River where the waters did not part. For Joseph Taban, that day will never go away. We saw so many people who were just floating on the river. Dead bodies. Dead bodies, yeah, who were floating on the river. Many were shot, many drowned, many were eaten by crocodiles. Zachariah Magak was there. 1,000 to 2,000 were died in that river. 1,000 or 2,000 2, died in that in river? That, yes. It wasn't much better on the other side. They walked across deserts, over mountains. They had no food or water. Paul Dang was seven when he started the walk. You have to urinate so that you drink your own urine. Did you ever do it yourself? Yeah, I didn't want to die. Other people didn't want to die. In the spring of 1992, after walking more than a thousand miles, the boys made it over the border into Kenya to a desolate place called Kakuma. For the UN, it was an emergency of vast proportions, these emaciated children. For the boys, it was the safest they'd been in five years. <coughs> Joseph became a medical assistant at the camp clinic. Abraham found a job preaching the gospel in a church built of mud. The Lost Boys couldn't go home to Sudan, and Kenya didn't want them. Then, in the year 2000, the State Department decided they deserved a break and invited them to come live in the United States. What we want to do is give you a correct understanding of what life will be like in America. 
Before they took off for their new lives in the new world, Sasha Chanoff, a teacher from Boston, gave them a crash course, America 101. Does anybody know who the president of the U.S. is now? Judge Bush W. You. Things they could not imagine, like winter. This is a little what winter in America feels like. <laughs> what does it feel like? It's very cold. <laughs> Will you die because of that coolness? No, people do not die because of the coolness. He had three days to prepare them for a leap of a thousand years. Many of them have never been exposed to lights or to a fork and a knife or seeing a TV. It's a group that's lost in time. They had four days to pack their luggage. They took little, left less behind. Abraham was taking a book he'd been carrying for 10 years. You still have the Bible that you carried from Ethiopia here? Yes. It's my life. I, I, I've been called a lost boy, but I'm not lost from God. I lost from my parents. As in any farewell, the lost boys were saying, see you soon. But they knew better. Kakuma was losing its doctor and its priest. Take it together and put it in. The boys had never been on a plane before. They'd never even been on a bus. Good. Five planes in two days. First initiation right, airplane food. And then changing planes in Brussels getting their feet on the ground in the Western world. <laughs> Next stop for Joseph Taban and his brothers, Kansas City. There it is. Oh, yeah. You see the building? Yeah, yeah. That is Kansas City. I see. I didn't know that this place is so big like this. Abraham, the preacher man, was supposed to go to Chicago, but at the last minute, that was changed to Atlanta. Volunteers introduced them to the new apartments. To American mysteries, like a sink or a stove. Don't touch, because it burns. Yes. It's yeah. hot. A vacuum cleaner. <laughs> or a can, let alone a can opener. You want to try it? A wonderful machine. Within a few weeks, Joseph had his first job in a sweltering fabric factory. When he got home from work at 11 at night, he stayed up studying for that medical career he'd always dreamed of. You won't be surprised to learn that Abraham found his salvation in church. All Saints, one of the largest Episcopal churches in Atlanta. A month after his arrival, he was invited to be a guest deacon. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were terrific, Abraham. Yes. You were so good. The big problem was the sheer size of America and everything in it. Home Depot was a long way from home. This store is too big. Oh, I know it is. This is confusing. Confusing? Try to imagine what a fountain looks like to a man who's walked a thousand miles through a desert. Sasha Chanov, who taught the boys back in Kenya, said it was not easy for them to distinguish between what was real and what was pure fantasy in America. They're hearing that people have gone to the moon. If you're telling me people have gone to the moon, then they're seeing on TV that a horse can talk. Why is a horse talking so different from someone going to the moon? It's hard for people to distinguish what is reality and what is not. Some boys saw a street sign that said, dead end. And they thought, well, if I go down there, am I going to die? Then came 9-11, just a few months after the boys got here. They thought they'd left that kind of thing far behind forever. And it seemed that the war is following us. Wherever we go, war came up to us. Let's pray. As it did once again. 
The boys weren't surprised by it, not the way Americans were. For them, Islam and terrorism went together, always had. Their reaction was immediate, help the victims. In Atlanta, they offered to donate blood for the survivors in New York, but they were turned away. So what we did, we just collect some money, $2, $5, because we have nothing. And we give about four, 400 400 dollars yes and that is amazing it really is <laughs> yes a community with nothing people just come from africa but they weren't coming anymore after 9 11 the flight scheduled to bring over more lost boys were stopped and the boys already here were having a tough time of it that dreaded american winter was now upon them they'd been warned but it still came as a shock. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Winter gave them fun times as well, though. <laughs> Ice capades. <laughs> what Americans call a learning experience. <laughs> and Christmas, their first. In America, we call him Santa Claus. OK, Santa Claus. Yeah. I do, yep, I do heard of Santa Claus. Uh -huh. He lives up in the North Pole with me. He drives, he rides on reindeer. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mean he lives in North Pole? Yeah. Is he from, uh, how do I call these people? Eskimos. Eskimos, yeah? Eskimos. Well, he's the guy who brings presents to all the children on Christmas. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He makes kids happy. That's the important thing. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, pull back. Within a year, a Kansas City investment banker, Joey McClaney, took Joseph under his wing and put him in the saddle. Whoa now. Only use that leg. McClaney so. offered up his brand new car for Joseph's first driving lesson. There you go. Okay. Okay. Stop, oh. Joseph. Stop. Break. 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 Oh, boy. Break. Okay, don't. 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 Oh. Let go. Let go, Joseph. Hit the brake. Okay. Didn't it? That's the brake. The big one. Okay. Oh, boy. Relax. I'm so sorry what That's I made. Right. Yeah? Relax. <laughs> I'm sorry, I've made a mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was nearly 12 years ago. In a moment, we'll give you a picture of the road the Lost Boys have been taking in America.